The all-new Volvo XC60 in our full driving review, one of the most anticipated cars of the year. And everything of that is today on Auto Fuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Today with Thomas. A detailed look on the exterior, different trim levels on the outside and also different trim levels on the inside. We will present you everything of that and also the driving experience today with the optional air suspension and we also take a look at the semi-autonomous driving features that will be very interesting i can promise you of course in full hd full screen and full length let's go Very strong front in all trim levels, that's for sure. And I mean, design-wise, I want to hear your opinion, of course, but I think already right now, it's one of the most beautiful SUVs, especially in this compact SUV segment. You also have the Thor's Hammer LED lights, also the turning indicators here. When you open the car, you see how the signature is pretty interesting and comes with LED lights here also in the top trim level. This one is the inscription and therefore we also have chrome vertical fins right there. It will look different in other trim levels. I will soon show you, for example, the R design. And you know, to save money, I always advise you to go for low or mid trim levels that you don't pay too much money. Later on, I will tell you also more about the prices. 4 meters 68 or 15 foot 3 is the total length of the all new XC60. Not so much different to the predecessor. 4 centimeters longer this one, but the wheelbase has been lengthened to create more space in the interior. We will see later on if that really works. Really excited. Still, this vehicle here is 27 centimeters shorter than the XC90, the bigger brother. And some might want to have a Volvo SUV, a modern Volvo SUV. This one, by the way, the keyless entry function. See the side mirrors flip out. And now you have an easier entry right again in the new generation so that might be relevant so I, in this review I will also talk about differences XC60 and XC90. Rims you get 18 or 19 as we are here in the inscription or in the R-line trim but also 21 inch in the R-design for example optional possible I will soon show you that but I think I would be really fine with this size 19 inch looks great to the car by the way the color here is denim blue they got really interesting colors and i like the contrast with the chrome around the windows overall if you look at the design from the side profile it hasn't changed that much it's rather a conservative one but a very clean and beautiful one you see here that the main design line raises up here to form a little stronger shoulders this one is a diesel here today and what is missing here well the scr cleaning hmm what about that Soon more to that in the engine part. What do you think about the side profile? The interior is way different from the predecessor. You will soon see that. However, here in the rear, you see a lot of resemblance to the outgoing model. Just that this horizontal taillight strip has been added right there. Again, it's rather a timeless design, also with a rather round structure, whereas the front was a little bit more angular. I think overall, I think it is really a very good design, seamless design. What's your take? Which is your favorite compact SUV design-wise at the moment? This is the key. 
and we got very solid door handles door closing sound inscription trim level there's Xenium package available, I will talk about more of that soon, but I can tell there's leatherette on the inside of the doors and feels really great. They got really good build quality here as well, automatic door uh, window handles and also galvanized handles right there. Bowers & Wilkins sound system. Then this interior, I love the styling from the bright interior, wow! However, as it is the highest trimmer of the inscription, the seat is all animal skin, at least the inside parts. But there's a good alternative. It's called City Weave. You can get it, for example, in the Momentum trim level. And then you have a fabric mix with some Scandinavian checkered blue design and then bright leatherette on the outside. You can um, take a look at it as a photo on our website too. And just look it up in the configurator. You save money. You have a more sustainable solution and it really, I think it looks even better. And you also have good climate comfort when fabric is on the inside, just for seating longer terms. You sweat less and it's also not that cold in winter as with this one here. Also great design from the steering wheel in this contrast here. I just love this interior from the style. And as I said, I'm glad that there are also sustainable options you can go for because here with the inscription trim level, I will tell you the, the very prices in the end, but with the top trim and all of the options here, the car really gets too expensive. So you have to be aware that you don't exceed the options. Seating, first of all, the steering wheel can be adjusted. And if you compare it to models before, this one is a very smooth mechanism now. I do feel this car has better build quality also than the XC90. Here with the panoramic roof, the headroom is rather shallow. I'm one meter 86 or six foot one. So that could be a little bit better. Yeah, you have to think about if you're a little bit taller than me, then probably you should out, leave out the panoramic roof. Uh, other than that, you got this high seating position, not as high as in the XC90 it feels. But in general, I mean, when you're sitting here in the front and use the front, there's no real reason to go for the XC90 other than that you have even more trunk in the rear. In the front, you can easily go with an XC60 and even have the better car. As I said, the build quality is better than in the XC90. You feel it in some little details. And one interesting detail, look at how low this door sill is. And when I close it and then open it again, look how the whole area right in here is covered. That means that this area will not get dirty. It's a very interesting idea because this area, especially when you are in a car wash and stuff or when there's mud coming from the lower part, here you see also the, the rubber lip. So this will rather stay clean with this vehicle. Pretty interesting feature. But then of course, when you have, for example, a very high pavement next to you, look out that you don't scratch the ground. Cockpit overview. This is definitely a car where you say, wow, Scandinavian design really pretty especially with this matte wood it doesn't leave any fingerprints feels very well it looks superb and has this clean scandinavian nature design also i really adore this bright styling right there and important that the dashboard remains black because otherwise a bright dashboard would really reflect in the windshield this one here is also equipped with the so-called Xenium package. And that one adds leatherette on the top of the dashboard, for example, and also uh, at some parts of the inside of the doors. And the interesting thing here again is no one could really tell. So it's a really high class leatherette. They could, for example, also use for the seats a little bit more. But as I told you, there is a possibility. I think especially due to this span here, even more beautiful than the XC90 and surely even more central than the predecessor version. This one here, the nine inch screen, comes then with also with higher trim levels. So more details to that very soon. The only button is below that for the volume in this crystal design here with the eight speed automatic gearbox two. And also the lower parts right there they are again covered in matte natural wood, open cell. This is a very interesting feature and you can slide those ones open. Then you have the cup holders below that. They are also a little bit adaptive, 12 volt power supply. Then you got the start engine stop. You turn it 
right to start the drive mode button all again in this crystal design and what you also feel is that they have improved the build quality also if you compare it to the xc9 you see here the middle armrest is also very properly attached for example and below this one here we got some space and also two usb slots look at that steering wheel what an awesome design with a color contrast i just love it and it fits the same with the rest of the interior however i would also love if they offer the option to put it with the leather red cover mm -hmm. then you got the for example the adaptive cruise control or then also the pilot assist control functions right there on the steering wheel and the instruments you see they're all dark at the moment they are option fully digital either you get h8 inch or then optional this one here 12.3 inch and then you can also start the engine you can see all of them with the modern digital display which has the advantage that you can also for example have gps information in there and there's now also a head-up display with a clear visual displayment and also gps information can be seen there definitely a nice option so this infotainment system like in the xc90 has one button as a home screen and then everything is sorted here for example for the sound system you can pick different settings here phone you can either add via bluetooth or also if you scroll here you can use apple carplay or android auto then the gps looks like this you can also put it a little bit bigger right there and see also it's quite responsive we also can zoom in and out now that's obviously the highest zoom and you see it takes some time to load that could be a little bit faster you have to get you know, Dresden today so we have to get used to the infotainment system a little bit settings for example changing the language is right there if you scroll from there you can also put it to the left here for example if you want to use the camera um, that is also very important sometimes you know when you want to go in the front and want to use the camera then you just do like this and put the camera there and you see it's really crystal clear good resolution this is the rear view camera now but you can also put it to this surround view this is the fake drone from above made out by four cameras and then you can also click to see the in-depth look on each single camera so very well done that one of course this screen is very prone to fingerprints but there's a good solution because it comes here directly with the microfiber tissue and there's a symbol on there two seconds what does that mean very interesting because when you then hold this one here for two or three seconds it goes in a cleaning mode that no option is activated and then you can take your time and clean it without activating anything and have a clear screen so um you know you should rather do that after eating some french fries probably a very nice detail is the frameless mirror very elegant and you can see very well then we have an optional panoramic roof you can remove that shade like this and it's also possible to open it just a notch here wow that's really big wow and then you can also open it fully and this makes it well closest to an suv convertible because it's actually a quite big gap here and leaves a lot of light in the interior by the costs of having a little bit less headroom so what about the rear compartment as i said the car is a little bit longer now has longer wheelbase that should leave more room on the inside than the predecessor version the package on the xc60 however was never the best one in segments so i'm really excited how it looks like right now and yeah that really has improved i got the seat as i would be driving and you can see that still leaves me enough knee room so even here in the rear i would not need an xc90 really headroom wise well that's close but again this is with a panoramic roof if you want more headroom for rear passengers then you should leave out the panoramic roof however it also leaves light in the interior so it's also nice to have seating position very comfortable and upright here too so the xc90 would be important for you 
if you want to have those additional seats, those sixth and seventh seats. Also here, armrest with another storage space and cup holders in the front. Optional, you can also get the climate control for the rear seats, that is possible then. And there's even a real plug in the rear and a 12 volt power supply. So also very, I mean, those details here, they really paid attention to details. I love that. And you can already see from here, this is also where a ski hatch would go through. So you cannot open it from here. You have to go to open it from the other side, but you will also already see that it's possible. And with the seats, you can also flip them and you see and automatically the head restraints go down and you have a nice cloth on the rear part, top tether available and isofix anchors on the outside of the seats. You can already see that we have a split here. This is basically one third. The rest we can take a look from the trunk. So what about the trunk? Electric hatch we have right here. Also again, bright interior. I love that style. You see the cover here moves up automatically directly with the hatch. Below here, by the way, nice aluminum covers. Then we have a spare tire right there. A 12 volt power supply on the left side. This one would be the ski hatch I showed you earlier. Then when you put the armrest down, you have this hatch, the small hatch opened. Then also interesting, let's see you have an old dog, for example, wants to get in the trunk or maybe you're know, just for loading heavy things. Then you can, if you have the option air suspension, put this car a little bit lower and it does make some difference indeed. So it's not the biggest difference, but I think you saw that it's quite useful. And then next to that, the buttons for, for, for flipping the seats. And you know, the only thing is, there's no sensor for people sitting in front of there. And that means when people sit there, and that happened on the motor show, they get hit. So they should add sensors that people, you know, when you say that when they sit there, that they are also not attacked by the seats. But then again, all flat, you can very well use this vehicle Again, I see the advantage for the XC, XC90 really with the 6th and 7th seat. Other than that, the X60 will be totally enough for you. And child safety test. Well done! Nice sensitivity, but still they manage that the hatch closes all the time in a, in a good way. So, well done. Oh, and the car moves up again. And let's take a comparing look at the R design trim level. Sporty look with aggressive spoilers in the lower part. The front grille in glossy black with horizontal elements, then with those pins here to have a more aggressive look overall. Which is your favorite? At the moment, you start with 18 inch rims. I guess later on with the entry model, there will also be lower rim trims. Then 19 usually with the R design, but those ones here are the 21 inch optional big wheels. They are really huge and I'm not sure about the riding comfort. I would rather go with the 19 inch for example. They still look great and give you a little bit more comfort. Then also here those aluminum caps. I think not the best decision to go with a white color combination, but if you pick a blue exterior, that will make a great match for sure. What do you think about the side profile of the R design if you compare it to the other trims? And also a sporty look in the rear, especially with this lower bumper right there. And then again, fake exhaust tips all the way. And another seat alternative would be the R design trim level. Here you got microfiber on the inside and supposed to be animal skin on the outside. Well, I mean, at least you go also for a microfiber decision, also good for the climate comfort and sportier because you don't slide around in the seat so much and the seat also has a little bit more shoulder support. So this would be an alternative if you go with a very high trim level. And also different R design steering wheel here, contrast stitches on the inside and the steering wheel form itself is also a little bit different. 
also the R design rather not features wood, but here an aluminum style. And an interesting Easter egg here, a silhouette of a Sweden flag. So what's under the hood? Nice that it continues all the way to the front, good for design. Not so good for crash and uh, insurance cost, of course. Then hydraulic studs, as we used to from Volvo. This one here is the D4. Diesel engine, I mean all engines, petrol and diesel, are two liter displacement and four cylinder. This one here, 190 horsepower, the smaller diesel. And then there's also a 235 variant available. And petrol engines, at the moment, there is a 250 horsepower and also 320 and this 320 horsepower variant can also be combined with hybrids this is in the, the t8 so 320 plus about 80 horsepower from the electric engine it's a plug-in hybrid same as with the xc90 that one is you know is the future engine you know that one it's uh, most up to date this acceleration here about 8.4 seconds by the way to 100 kilometers Later on there will also be entry engines for petrol and diesel to get the base price even lower, for example. And what about the SCR cleaning? It doesn't have it yet, so, and that is of course utterly necessary. It is supposed to be later on introduced then. They will get it and they have to get it also just from regulations. But I would then recommend not to go for the diesel yet. Just go for it when it has the SCR cleaning. And of course, diesel just makes sense if you're going a long, long way. Consumption-wise, very interesting. The Volvo engines do consume a lot of fuel. 8.5 liter on one kilometers is our test result with this engine for today. And the petrol engines are way above 10 liters. Start. Starting an engine right there. Easy to put in D mode and we'll start in the city and then we'll head over to the countryside. And that the interesting thing mute the GPS. Here in Dresden today. Very pretty old buildings, it's all been rebuilt after World War II. And what you feel, especially in a narrow city, steering is very light. This car has an advantage if you compare it to the XC90 or also other very big full-size SUVs as a compact SUV. It's still very well maneuverable in the city. You don't feel, oh, I have so such a big car, I feel a little bit annoyed now, I have to get along somehow a little bit better. This is the strength of compact SUVs, especially if you think about a um, European city. You can, of course, go uh, one segment below, but definitely you have an advantage if you, for example, do not need a sixth or, or seventh seat. It's really calm here, especially when we're standing still now. So they have worked on the sound installation. Also, if you compare it to the predecessor model, of course, the sound installation has been good already before. The eight-speed automatic gearbox, the shifting really smoothly traffic announcement I, I hate those traffic announcement but I mean sometimes they can be very useful but they just you know pop up and then they surprise you at times you can also follow the GPS for example when I see oh, yeah. going over the the Elbe now very soon and you can also see it in the middle display if it appears to you by the way that the middle part is flickering a little bit and the other one not it's not really flickering in real life when you look at it with your own eyes, it's just on the display. So that's a mismatch of the frame rate of the camera and of the display because the camera um, record faster basically in the display show, but for your eyes it won't really make a difference. And the third GPS view is then 
exactly in the head-up display in front of my eyes so it's pretty helpful to have um, different opportunities to take a look at those oh this block right here in this road actually want to go here but the bridge is closed and pay attention to that but here again the steering wheel is so light it's actually fun i mean at some point you say maybe mm, is it good to have very light steering wheel i'm not exactly sure does it feel unnatural yes in a way it does feel unnatural still wants to no I've got the other bridge now but then again especially when cruising around in the city it's so easy to do that start stop function you hear the engine is silent now but i'm not the biggest fan of start stop function because on a long term run they're really not good for the engine we experienced that in the total laboratory in france they explained that that when they tested the engine on a long term run it's more thing to get the fleet consumption down for the manufacturer it's not really helping you so when you're going some slalom here at about 50 again the steering wheel is basically dead it feels a car game style alike so again for the city driving this is helpful because it, and for parking in and out that really helps you you don't need to have any power in your hands if you rather think about the sportier approach then it wouldn't really match that then again, Volvo is not the brand that says we are in this sporty region, so I think that's still okay. You know, if it is a BMW, for example, I would expect something different then, for example. We will soon also test the different driving modes we have available. The overview here to the sides. Well, the windows are rather upright and this bright interior also helps to get the overview because everything looks so bright and clean and although it has some interesting design features on the exterior you have a good roundabout overview from the inside and then you also have if you really need it the optional camera systems available so you could use those ones too yeah what you feel also with this air suspension in normal mode the car is pretty heavy in corners and the steering wheel doesn't give you any feedback from the road. So driving fast, at least in the normal driving mode, is really not you know, the, the big specification of, of this very vehicle. I think you can go here. This is interesting because... I usually don't haunt people, but maybe you would have waited another three hours. This is interesting here, you can drive at the red light when there's this green arrow and of course no one else is coming then it's okay and I would say we also when the, the green light comes now we test the acceleration just a little bit also stay in normal mode and we go outside we also go to the to the other different driving modes but what I feel already right now I mean standard suspension would be just a normal one this one here with the, uh, adapt with the adaptive air suspension, that's the reason we would also lower the trunk in the rear. And the interesting thing is that with the sedan, with the S60, or uh, sorry, with the uh, S90 or V90, you only had the rear air suspension, not in the front. With the XC90 and then also here with the XC60 SUV style, you have it for both axles. And I guess you do feel that, um, you know, the, the S and V90 suspension is also good already. But this one here gives something more in smoothness. You feel, especially feel it on the front axle. So I think we should be able to go now, yeah. Let's give it a little more throttle. Oh, the diesel gives notice then. Hey, I'm there. So it takes a little time to shift down. That was not really full throttle. So this one is a 190 horsepower diesel here. It's the smallest engine you can get so far. Later on there will also be an entry diesel and lower entry petrol engine to bring the base price of the vehicle down just a little bit. It will also be a very interesting. And of course the, the hybrid engine we can present you at the later stage. Driving modes, this was comfort. Um, we can also have eco. Then we can more use this so-called 
sailing or coasting. It means when I leave the throttle just as it is, the car is not reducing speed so much, but just rolling, the consumption drops to zero liters and I can just let the car roll out, maybe save some fuel by that. Then we could have the off-road mode, but just at the very low speeds. Here at 50 kilometers an hour already tells me speed is too high, sorry, can't use it. We'll test that later on when we drive a little bit slower. Because the reason is the car would put itself a little bit higher from the suspension and for that it wants to go slower. Let's take a look at dynamic, high performance. The car shifts down a gear, so it shifts down earlier and shifts up later. It gives you a better performance. Let's say you're on the motorway and want to drive a little bit faster, maybe taking an you know, overtaking maneuver that might be useful or if you want to have a little bit more response. Does the steering wheel change? Now comfort again. Did we pick it? Yes. Yeah, I think a little bit. It's really light. Dynamic now. Yeah, I think you, you get yeah you get a little bit more responsive from the steering wheel. So if you for example say you want a little bit stiffer steering wheel, you could do that with a dynamic mode. Also the um, paradigm shift in gear characteristics, gear and you know how the car is shifting. It's not that different. It's a little bit you feel it, but it's not that you would say I cannot ride in a dynamic mode all the time could do it, you will save more fuel if you're just in the comfort mode, but you also hear now at the moment the car is not really loud, the engine is well insulated, you do not feel that much that it would be a diesel only if you really hammer the throttle and also as a warning, you know, I'm more in favor of petrol engines nowadays than diesels, but the petrol engines here in, uh, at Volvo, they consume so much fuel. So if you're driving really a lot then it might still sense to, uh, to to go with a diesel just when you're really driving a lot. Other than that, the hybrid is of course also a nice interesting option now already. I found the dynamic mode quite good because it gives you a little bit more throttle response. Maybe if I'm really relaxed then I would go back to the comfort mode. Other than that, if I want a little bit sportier, I could very well imagine staying in the, in this dynamic mode because it makes the shifting a little bit faster and you feel a little bit more connected to the car overall. The shifting and then the acceleration doesn't lag that much behind, for example, in this case. What is also possible if you put, because there are no shifting pedals at the steering wheel, but you can put the automatic gear lever to the left position, then you can shift manual. That's rather for, for example, when you're going downhill for a very long time, and you want to use the engine brake, then you might go down manually just a gear that you can, you know, don't have to hammer the brakes all the time that much that the engine brake is also helping you. For normal shifting, I would rather leave it in, in, the, in the normal mode. What about assistance systems? I can activate them here on the left side of the steering wheel and this is for the adaptive cruise control and also for the pilot assist. This, uh, wait a minute, was it called pilot assist at Mercedes or at Volvo? Pretty confusing with those <laughs> brand names for the assisted uh, driving or the semi-autonomous driving functions. Let's see. So, let's set this one here to 50 now. This one should be the, the normal one adaptive cruise control. There are also, by the way, blind spot monitor monitors inside. Uh, let's see, when I go to the right side, you know. And then when I next week, I'll uh, go a little bit slower just. And then you will hopefully see the next slow vehicle approaching very soon. So take a look. Ah, oh, he's going behind me, come on. <laughs> but this yellow Ford car might or want to overtake me. See here now the red, right, uh, the, the, yeah, there it is, the right light in the mirror. Pretty helpful option. You know the autonomous emergency brake, AEB, 
that one comes standard equipment with every Volvo. Good choice. Also the important features. The other assistance systems then rather come optional, but in general Volvo has a wide list of those and so they also try to have a unique feature in safety. So what about this cruise control? So at the moment I've set it to 50 now. The distance to the car in front of me is being kept. Also basically on as screen on the road I'm reading the head-up display again. There I also got the symbol that I have the adaptive cruise control activated and the system is actually working pretty flawlessly. Then if I go to the right arrow here I also have the pilot assist and you should not do that while I'm doing it at the moment it's just for display purposes and I'm really keeping my hands in close proximity all the time just want to show you that this car already has the capability of driving itself. Now it says apply steering so then I have to get the steering wheel again, otherwise the system would deactivate because it's not meant to drive itself completely yet. It could theoretically, technically, but the governmental regulations are not that far. That will come over the years now. It is definitely a first step to that, or maybe I would rather say a second step already to that because it does work. Here now again, left corner, well, okay. I mean, you see in those situations sometimes you think shall I trust the machine right now or shall I not and sometimes I'm, I'm not really 100% sure yet you see most of the time it works quite well but of course again it's not meant to do that just to show you that it's already basically working however for example here now in traffic this can be really helpful then see if this is working so I'm maybe I could go left now but I want to have this traffic situation for you now I'm doing nothing at the moment let's see what the car does 10 9 kilometers I'm just rolling steadily now and that could be really helpful for example this time I could open a water bottle you know have some water or you know do whatever of course it's still not allowed to pick up your smartphone during that could still be fine for that but I think especially in traffic when you're a little bit annoyed ah, come on seriously then with this with this assist especially for the traffic situations you get a little bit relieved you know they say okay the car handles it what is very boring now that might also be a transition for autonomous driving itself in general because we all love to drive all people who, who watch this channel including me but there are so many um, traffic situations being where we say it's not about you know fun of driving it's just boring and it's really you know traffic standing still whatever or cruise control on a 100 and going five hours one way then autonomous driving can really be helpful see it all the time I, I really doing nothing and that would be at the moment the main reason to go for this system to use it as this traffic assist Let's see, we're coming to a total standstill now, what the car does now. So now zero. What's the car doing now? This is pretty really interesting. The car will also start automatically from itself. Or if I have to um, apply the throttle just a little bit. Yeah, no, it does not. So I have to apply the throttle just a little notch. Then the system starts again. And the thing is, if you stay at this very low speed, I think the, the threshold is about this 30, I think, then it's also okay to keep your hands off the steering wheel. The car, ah, now it says apply steering because it was, maybe it's also 50, I'm not exactly sure, but now I said really please apply it. But then as you see all the time in the very low speed regions, the car didn't complain at all because that's really, I mean, it's relatively safe situations. Again, you're still responsible, you have to keep uh, let's say we go left side now, it goes a little bit faster. You have to be able to control everything. And now to our last discipline for today, motorway, giving it a little bit more speed. You know, this dead steering, which is easy to control, it is, um, it is somehow strange. And again, for sporty drivers, will not be satisfied. 
But then again, I mean, it's still fun in a way. Um, it feels a little bit computer game-like. It's very interesting. And again, for city driving, it's really helpful. So let's go to the dynamic mode, see what this car got. Yeah, we're in dynamic mode. And let's do some 70 to... Let's see, I think we can even have unlimited speed here. So far, by the way, before I really apply the throttle right now, as for consumption, with this traffic and stuff, 13 liters. What? Okay, we'll take another look at that later. Okay, now we got a little bit down there, but let's just have the throttle off. 85 and bam. in a way sound insulation wise well it's still okay I mean we're driving we're driving 160 kilometers an hour now I think we had you know in some Mercedes or Audi a little bit better result at higher speeds but then again this is only a German thing no other car market in the world drives 160 or 170 on the motorways because it's just not allowed Now at 130, which is a reasonable speed then for here. Car behaves quite well. Let's see. So this one would also be the maximum speed for the pilot assist usually. Let's see. Yeah, now it's got activated, deactivated. 140, 35. Should be, yeah, 130, that's right. So theoretically this would also be working and of course I don't want to take my hands off the steering wheel right now. But what I could use it for now would be that I relax a little bit more and let the vehicle do the fine tuning on the road. So I keep my hands at the steering wheel and then the vehicle is keeping itself in the lane. It feels a little bit strange to get some reaction from the steering wheel itself of course also when driving at higher speeds but it could be something that maybe is also relieving some of the stress you know like to hold onto the steering wheel you know but again i think it's, it's you know it's rather for lower speeds there where the system is rather helpful of course at any time you can turn it off and take it over yourself what about stability now at higher speeds yeah you feel the with the air suspension the car is tilting really a lot then so again not set for a sporty ride but I have no problem that the emphasis is on the, the comfortable ride and again if you want a sportier one you could also go with the R design not pick an air suspension pick an R design suspension then you're also sportier for your personal driving so that's still possible what about suspension in the dynamic mode if compared to the comfort mode? Let's test that one. Comfort. I'm not always sure if I really pressed it. So does it make a difference now? Steering is a little bit different. Bumps in the road. Now back to dynamic. Yeah, actually the was I was also displaying there in the, in the front display, maybe you've seen that. The car is putting itself a little bit lower in the dynamic mode. That is also one of the reasons why the suspension is then yeah, a little bit stiffer, you feel that. Also steering reacts a little bit more. And if the suspension is a little bit lower, of course, that reduces the tilting. So I think it's good to have those different driving modes available. So if you want to have a little bit sporter, go with the dynamic mode. So then you can basically have two cars in one. The emphasis still remains on comfort and well sound insulation could be a little bit better on very high speeds other than that it's also a great cruising car for the motorway just setting the cruise control for example now is 100 we got allowed cruise control and then it roll and there's not really much less comfort than with another huge SUV also internally in the, the XC90 so again, from driving in the front, no problems at all. A very comfortable car. And overall, I mean, we gave you a 
detailed inside really. So many interesting aspects about this very vehicle. But overall, also if you compare it to the predecessor version, you feel it would be a, a little X XC90, yes. It still got something from the old XC60, a little bit, but not too much actually. But I think, also driving wise, if you're not the big sports fan, this is probably the best Volvo so far. And now to our conclusion for today, the all new generation of the Volvo XC60. Exteriorize, definitely a beauty, I think we can agree on that. If not, put it in the comments. Alongside maybe the uh, Jaguar F-Pace, I think those ones are my favorite in design from the exterior. Not too different though from the predecessor model, but especially the front is more modern and you have trim level differences also, you can really pick your favorite one. The interior really refined, they are back on their game now. The very first XC90 reviews we did, they did something really new there and some of the deals were like okay, but not super premium. They have fixed the little details now. I think the build quality now is really great, even better than in the current XC90 models. Also, the styling is a little bit more sensual, definitely. And you have great options. You just have to go uh, with the also lower or mid trim levels. If you go with the high trim levels, prices will rocket, unbelievably. So, but I've mentioned earlier, especially with those city weave option, you have good fabric level red option, for example, is sustainable, good from climate comfort, and um, also very attractive in design and price. Because talking about prices, at the moment, this vehicle, hey, 12,000 euros more than the predecessor version. Yeah, that's because the predecessor was available with the entry engines. For this one here, also the entry engines will be introduced and then the price will again start just below 40,000 euros if we take German prices as a reference, or 37, 38, something like that with the smallest engines then. However, the vehicle as it stands here today, although there's just the 190 horsepower diesel in it, with the inscription trim and all the extras, almost 80,000 euros, so you double the price. But that's again not necessary. So if you, for example, go with um, a small petrol engine and then go with a middle trim level, and um, you know the AEV, for example, the city emergency brake is included anyway. Some other important features included. You maybe get the rear view camera and good sound system. Then you can score at, let's say, a, guard, a very good X, XC60, I would say about 50,000 euros. And then you still have something very traffic, but which is not super, super high in price yet. Driving wise, very interesting. It feels and handles better than the XC90 because, I mean, it's the same uh, modular architecture they're using for this one here than with the XC90. But still, as it's smaller, it's more agile, better to drive, more fun to drive. It's not the real sporty SUV. That is rather, you know, if you go with the BMW um, X4, X3 or with a Mercedes GLC 43, but with the air suspension, you get superb comfort. You can also pick it with the dynamic mode, but you can also just pick the standard suspension. You will totally fine by that. And if you want it a little bit sportier, go with the R design, then you also have it a little bit stiffer. So possibilities are there, but the main emphasis is on comfort. And together, for example, with the new assistance systems, they are working really flawlessly and thus a very comfortable ride and also aiming towards semi-autonomous drive, which worked very well in traffic. So, a lot of positive things to say about this vehicle. On the negative side, well, the trunk cover, which is raising up automatically up, didn't raise automatically down again. I'm not sure why. That was a little bit strange to me, just a minor detail. But then, what about this SCR cleaning? Why haven't they introduced it yet? Even if it would come later, not so good for the customers that are buying the diesel actually right now. So I would wait with diesel purchases of the XC60 just a little bit. Maybe if you watch this video at a later time, the issue will also be resolved. However, Volvo is anyway going away from diesels and going more for this petrol electric combination. Hybrid will be a way to go with Volvo for the next coming years. About this electrification strategy, I will also have a separate comment video 
where we can discuss this Volvo strategy. So, and now, thank you again for tuning in to Autogefühl. Always remember to activate the notifications, so next to the subscribe button on our channel, there's a the small bell. And check that you got this one activated, that you always get the information that we upload some new videos. And just bookmark autogefühl.com, then you can always go back to our site, that you don't miss any of our reviews. Thanks for tuning in.